The Tegmark Makes Chips. Welcome to another episode. Hi, my name is John. Today I'm going to be bringing the Tegmark, as I call it, to life. For those of you who haven't seen previous episodes, the Tegmark is basically a Teg CNC mill that I've upgraded with a new frame as well as an R8 spindle that supports TTS or the Tormach tooling system. This time what I'm going to be doing is showing you my learning curve as I learn a new workflow. In the previous setup I would have to install each tool and then zero the tool before I could do any work. With TTS tool holders instead it's measuring the length of the tools entering that into Mach 3, which is what I'm still using at the moment, and then switching between tools and Mach 3, and Fusion will keep track of which tool to use and will keep track of the tool length. So as you'll see, I also needed to learn how to use the Heimer, how to initially set it up, how to calibrate it, and set the zero. So I'm going to head into all of that, and uh, let's head to the workshop and get started. I have this Heimer height setter, or I should say 3D tester, that I got. And this is going to be the first time that I use it. Before I use it, I need to calibrate it, or I need to figure out how high this is. In other words, the offset from here to here. And then the other thing is I will need to calibrate it. So first I'm going to set the height. To set the height, I put it in here, and you can see probably that it's flush there and it's reading zero. So this is upside down. What I want to do is take the height gauge here, make sure there's nothing underneath it, make sure the surface is entirely clean. And then I want to move this down here and then press zero. Once I've done that, I can bring this up and then bring the tip over the tip of the Heimer. Make sure it's on perfectly. Get it down so it's close to zero. Lock this again. And then set this so it's exactly at zero. And now it's 4.5 six, seven, five. I'm going to do that a couple more times just to make sure that this is repeatable. And then I'm going to enter that into the tool table on Mach 3. These are the tools that I'm going to need. I have four TTS collets, uh, holders, one TTS Jacobs chuck, uh, plus the Heimer. And that's exactly what I need for this job, which is fairly fortunate. So I'm going to go ahead and start installing these tools. And what I'm going to do is just install the collets and then the tools, and then I'm going to tighten everything down once I check that in the CAD to make sure that I have enough extension uh, on each of these tools. So I'll go ahead and start with this one. No particular order. Here's the 1 8 inch collet, so just, you know, you need to snap this in before you start, before you put a tool in, because otherwise you can break things. And then you can put it on there, and then the tool goes in the collet, and then you can tighten this down. And again, I, as I mentioned, I'm going to do the final tightening after I make sure everything is the way I want it. Okay, next up we'll do the 3 sixteenths. Make sure the collet's all the way in. Okay, now we have the two 1 quarter inch collets. Measure the required stick out in, in cam, and it's half an inch. So that means that uh, I can have a little bit more, like three quarters of an inch, to make sure I'm OK. And I don't have the correct tools yet for tightening these. So I'm going to do it this way, which I know is not the best way, but it will have to do for now. Uh, 
okay, now the next step is to go ahead and measure all of these. First thing I want to do is set the zero. I'll move this down and then press zero. And now this is uh, zeroed out. Now I can bring this up and move it over the other tool that I want to measure. So I'll move it over, set it down on top, and then this tells me it's 2.7045. Okay, so now I'll put in the next tool, which is the 3 16th inch end mill. Now that I have all of those measured, I can put these numbers in the, into the tool table in Mach 3, use the Heimer, and uh, hopefully everything will just work. First thing I want to do is check the runout. And as you can see here, I have a runout of about two thousandths of an inch. So that's... We'll have to see which way it goes, but let's see, the high is about there. So there's a screw here. So I'm going to first loosen this screw on the opposite side. And I'll go in here and uh, tighten it. Okay, so I want to tighten the other side. Okay, let's see how that is. To set the zero right here, I'm going to need to take this out uh, because the set screws are here and here. So according to this, okay, there's one setting. So I'll loosen these two. And then I think if I tighten this one, we'll find out. Yep, that's moving it in the direct, correct direction, so I'll loosen this one now. And that, to me, looks like about as close to zero as I'll be able to get, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now that I've done that, I'm going to swap the tools again, put the hammer back in. Because what I want to use, do is use the hammer to align the vise. I'm going to put the vise back in. Alright, let me slide these in. And that way this will form a pivot point. And I'm going to loosen this so I have access to this front face. Okay, and I'll take the par parallel off. Make sure it's clean. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, now I'm gonna go along the X. Okay, so that means this needs to go sideways a little bit. So, try that. Okay. 
I'm not sure what that is at right at the end, but in between it seems pretty good. Could be that. Oh yeah. What I'm noticing here is I need to adjust the 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 gibbs on the ways because I can rock this back and forth a few tenths and I'd like it to be a little bit more precise than that. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust all of this, get it set in, and then we're going to do our first cut. I've cleaned off a couple of the edges and so now I'm ready to start milling this. So the first thing I'm going to do is change to the Heimer. Just want to make sure that's in all the way. And now what I'm going to do is find the center this way and then the back edge and then the top. So I'm going to set the X to zero. Now I'll divide by two and that'll give me the center. Okay, I'll set Y to zero. And finally, I can set Z to zero. One of the things that I did before I got started is I uh, set the tool to one in Mach 3. Okay, so all four axes are set. I'll take the Heimer out and put this tool back in. Here we go. First thing I'm going to do is adjust the motor, the spindle speed to 10,000 RPM. Okay, there's 10,000 RPM. And now I'll start the program and be very careful about this. Currently I have it set to 15%. Okay, that looks correct. So I'll put it up to full speed. I'm going to do something that I've never done before, which is to run a single program that has multiple tools in it and therefore requires tool changes in midstream. The first tool up is the spot drill. Okay, next uh, tool up is the drill. And the drill I'm going to run at, I think it's about 1800 RPM. I forgot to set the Z height on that uh, tool, so I need to go do that. So I'll head over to offsets, go down to tool number 14. You can see the height is set to zero. And I'll change that to 4.259. Hit apply. Hit OK. Go back here. Uh, let's see. OK, 
Okay. And then I'm going to set the feed rate pretty low just to make sure that this is okay. So I'll do uh, cycle start and I still have it set to uh, slow. And if it looks good, then I'll start speeding it up. Okay. Well, something clearly isn't right there. The problem is that I had the wrong tool number in Mach 3 when I used the Heimer to set the zero height. So I went back, changed the tool number to one, and then set the Z height again. After I did that, as you can see, it had no problems drilling the holes in the correct location. As you can see from this episode, I had a bit of a learning curve. There were some things that I need to learn about changing my workflow, such as I needed to make sure that the Heimer was set to tool one and that Mach 3 was also set to tool one before I put it in and use it to set the X, Y, and Z zero. Actually, the X and Y are fine for setting the zero. It's really the Z because it needs to know what the length offset is for the Heimer. So that'll take some getting used to. The other part, being able to enter the offsets for all of the tools and just be able to switch between the tools is really nice. I'm certainly enjoying that. That's one of the things that gave me Tormach Envy and I'm really happy to have that capability. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up if you like it. You can give me a thumbs down if you didn't like it, but if you do, please let me know in the comments why you didn't like it and I'll see you next time. Oh, one more thing. In some of the video, you may have noticed that things are shaking a little bit. Right now, I'm in a small workshop that's in the same room that has the water heater in the heater. It's about 10 feet by 10 feet. I'm going to be moving in a very short while, and my new workshop is going to be larger, and it will have a concrete floor. So that means walking around and doing other things will not shake the cameras. So. In future episodes, the quality of the camera work, I hope, will be much better. See you next time. Mm -hmm.